and drink and stay awake because we're gonna have the last session and it's a wonderful speech along with the panel discussion as well. Uh, so in the following session, we'll continue to share how B Corp has realized its essential value in community and employee. Please welcome our keynote speaker, the Chief Operation Director of Foundation Paraguaya, Mr. Luis Fernando Sanabria. Good afternoon. I would like to thank uh, Corey and the organization for having me here uh, this afternoon. I have been meeting uh, so many very interesting people and learning a lot. And it makes it worldwide the 38 hours I spend in planes to reach this wonderful country. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. We are a, micro, a microfinance organization in Paraguay, in the middle of South America. But our goal is not to only financially include our clients. Our goal is to eliminate the poverty that affects our clients. And what microfinance industry does 30 years ago when uh, Mr. Junus started the movement here in Africa, was appealed to the dignity that people have. I mean, uh, the industry started to call people, instead of calling them street vendors, we call them micro-entrepreneurs. Instead of calling them beneficiaries, we call them clients. Instead of giving them grants, we gave them loans. And so, basically, the idea was if we develop the right tool, if we develop a high quality product, and if we make it accessible to poor people, poor people can start generating more income and can start overcoming poverty by themselves. And it works, it works. We have seen thousands of our clients overcoming poverty, at least in terms of the national poverty line in Paraguay. And I would say that uh, in Paraguay, many, many private companies are also paying the right salaries and even paying salaries above the, uh, the market average to their employees. But, there's a big but, still many of them lack of teeth. Or still many of them lives in this type of very polluted environment. Or, or still, even our clients are making more money, and even they overpass the national poverty line, they still use this type of bathroom, very inappropriate, you know, very basic. Or, or, or still, uh, they live overcrowding houses where adolescents, adults, and children uh, use the same bathroom. So many, many different ways of being poor. Uh, multidimensional poverty is a kind of great cloud that overwhelms poor families. So poor families do not know where to start to solve their problem. So inspired by microfinance, uh, we start thinking on what to do about this problem. How to start delivering products that are sustainable and that we can uh, make it accessible to our clients so they, they can start solving the different aspects of their poverty. Uh, and maybe more, even more important, how to appeal to their dignity. The poverty, the, the one that owns the poverty is the poor family. It's not the government nor the NGOs, not the private companies. Any of those stakeholders has a very important role to play. I mean, governments have to, to make services available for poor people. And companies have to, have to collaborate. But the only uh, actor that can take advantage of those existing services are the poor. 
You can take the horse to the river, but it's the horse the one that have to that have to drink uh, the water. So let me uh, show you a short video about the poverty stoplight, the tool we developed to approach this uh, this to face this program. Problem. solución ya está descubierta. Estamos desarrollando una metodología que se llama el semáforo de la pobreza. Es a la vez una, una métrica y una metodología para ayudar a las familias a sobrepasar la pobreza. Hacemos una encuesta visual en donde las familias se autodiagnostican a partir de una encuesta que tenemos en donde usamos eh, una aplicación denominada el semáforo de salida de la pobreza. Esta aplicación utiliza imágenes eh, y estas imágenes están divididas en tres colores, el verde, el rojo y el amarillo. El rojo indica una determinada situación, ya sea cómo está su vivienda, cómo está su baño, cómo está su camino eh, o cómo está, eh, por ejemplo, la parte de motivación, su autoestima, su interioridad, su espíritu emprendedor. A partir eh, del, del, de las respuestas que, que obtenemos eh, de la, del autodiagnóstico que hace la familia, eh, comenzamos a trabajar con ellas. Eh, explicamos a las familias que los rojos significan la pobreza extrema de la situación de ellas que el amarillo significa pobreza y que el verde ya sería una situación eh, ideal para las familias. Entonces comenzamos a trabajar para la solución de los rojos y los amarillos. Y una vez que la familia tiene su eh, diagnóstico elaborado por ella misma sobre su situación en salud o en ingresos o en educación, Ahí trabajamos con la familia para convertir su diagnóstico en su propio plan de eliminación de pobreza, donde nos concentramos en las fortalezas de las familias, en las necesidades de las familias, e identificamos a las familias exitosas del propio barrio para que puedan aportar sus experiencias. El trabajo que hacemos es muy importante porque nos da la oportunidad de... Eh, ayudar a las familias a aprovechar las oportunidades y agarrar las herramientas que están disponibles eh, eh, dentro de ellos mismos para poder eh, superar su nivel de pobreza. Estamos en muchos pueblos, en muchos barrios como estos, pero también en zonas rurales, ayudando a miles y miles de familias a identificar su nivel de pobreza, a hacer un plan de salida de pobreza y a eh, volver a tener ilusión, volver a tener esperanza. Yo, por ejemplo, como persona, yo no tenía casa, ni tenía mi casita, tengo mi olería. Gracias a todo lo, eh, el, todo lo que me dio la oportunidad la Fundación Paraguaya. Yeah. 
La experiencia nos enseña de que una vez que la propia familia se decide a salir de la pobreza, lo que nosotros tenemos que hacer es ayudar a encaminar esa energía, porque las soluciones están dentro del espíritu humano, dentro del potencial de cada familia humilde de cada país del mundo. We started working with this tool with our clients in microfinance, but after a few months we started to hear in our office, this program is really good for our clients, but what about us, the Fundación Paraguayas employees? We have 500 employees, which is uh, considered a small enterprise in Paraguay. Uh, so we started a program with our own employees, and a few months after, we started the program with so many, uh, with some companies in the country. So at this very moment, we're working not only with clients, but also with private companies, through association, but also directly, because uh, um, to help those companies to adopt this methodology and to approach the poverty that affects their own employees. We are also uh, working uh, with schools through competitions, and we are also working uh, uh, with uh, poor, helping other fa poor families to overcome uh, poverty. At this very moment, we are working with 55 private enterprises in Paraguay, uh, banks, uh, factories, associations, uh, enterprises that provide uh, services. And the concept, the concept is very simple. Let me briefly explain you how it works. Uh, we are spreading the world, the word throughout the world, and at this very moment we are working with 48 organizations, different types of organizations in, in some uh, 20, 25 or 26 countries in the world, uh, NGOs, private companies, uh, local governments, uh, multilateral agencies. So, uh, first step would be to join the movement and to adapt the indicator, the poverty is different in Paraguay compared to Tanzania or to, or to Taiwan. So those are the first steps. Uh, and after that, once you start your program, uh, what you do is to apply the survey and apply the survey using tablets. And the tablets use uh, photos and drawings I'll, I'll, explain, I'll explain it a little bit more. But basically, we use uh, 50 indicators in six dimensions. Sounds a uh, big number of indicators, but easily you can do it using technology in 30 to 40 minutes. So six areas, income and employment, health and environment, housing and infrastructure, education and culture, organization and social participation, and interiority and motivation. Six dimension, fifth indicator. Every indicator is defined in three levels, being red level to be extremely poor in this indicator. Yellow situation is to be poor, not extremely poor, but poor. And green situation would be not to be poor in this indicator. This is not an index, this is a dashboard. We do not weight the indicator. Uh, every definition has to be very simple because uh, the poor family has to understand the definition in order to take actions about the definition. So the information gathered is not only for the organization but mainly for the families. The families have to be able to actionate on it. So pot for example, potable water, having a tap is the green situation in Paraguay is not to be poor, having a well would be yellow situation, poor, and having to carry the water from outside your place, this is red situation. In Paraguay, in Tanzania could be different, or in any other countries of the world. Vaccination. Uh, at the end, what you have is the poverty stoplight of this specific family. Those are individual results, but you can aggregate the results. 
Uh, this is an example for coming from a private company in Paraguay. So you aggregate the results and you can compare one year against the other year so to see your, your, your progress. Uh, the software also allowed you to georeference the information so you can see how the poverty looks in any single territory. And uh, every dot in this, in this graphic is one house in one specific indicator. So uh, this is uh, regarding the survey. Once you apply the survey, uh, you use res the results in two ways. Uh, let's say to the, l uh, to the left, families will use the, the information to build their map of life. In the other way, the organization will use the aggregated results to build the menu of solutions. So uh, when you apply the, the survey, you have to, to leave the results with the families. For that purpose, we use what we call the calendar, because it's similar to a calendar. It's a printed version of the poverty stoplight. Using those um, stickers, we reflect the results and we leave the results with the families. And this is very important. If you take their survey's results, you take the problem. If you leave the results, the family keep the problem. So they, they can act on it. Um, this is how it looks. This is just an example. And what they do with this information is they build their, their, their life map. They choose their priorities and they plan how they will work on it. So this is regarding families. And then you have the organization that take the aggregate results. And we found many surprises in the aggregated results. Those are examples coming from private companies. In these examples, 60% of the, the employees of this company uh, do not know how to plan or budget. 60% also lack of social network. 35% uh, lack of authority to make decisions in their, in their houses. 70% uh, lack of savings. 40% uh, lack of bedroom space. And, 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 and things like that. So this tool also allows you to better understand the problematic of your employees in, and to act according to those uh, results. And what do you do with, this info, with, with the information? You start building the menu of solutions. I mean, uh, the, solu the, the the services that have to make it available to your employees to solve the problem. And this is not about to spend more money in your employees. This is about to use your brain as uh, entrepreneurs and to leverage resources to make it, it available. For example, uh, we as Fundacion Paraguaya, we are mainly providing solutions related to income generation, micro loans, Micro savings, micro insurances, micro franchises, and so on and so far. This is part of our, let's call it, usual business. But 35% uh, of our employee lack of savings. And what our financial director did is uh, she called to our bank asking them to open 500 saving accounts for our employees and asked the bank to pay the interest rate equivalent to the total amount that is saved by our employees. And the cost for the Fundacion was zero. We are just leveraging results. Or uh, this company, El Mejor, they, they, their, their, their business is their clean, they, they clean buildings. They organize uh, ways to build bathroom to their employees. And the company is putting 25% of the amount the employees build an association and they are raising money and collaborate with 50% of the total cost and the owner of the, the bathroom is putting uh, 25%. Or other companies are partnering with Senabitat, which is the public agency for, for housing, or Habitat for Humanity, a worldwide NGO working in, in housing, 
and they partner to provide solutions, housing solutions to their employees. Again, the cost, the cost is zero. It's just leveraging existing solutions or, or results. And like that, this organization uh, is partnering with the Deutsch, uh, with the Deutsch Development Agency to train their employees about uh, a violence a, a, again, a, inside the family. Uh, this one is uh, providing financial training and even a, a financial clinic to their employees because uh, the over indebtedness is a big issue in Paraguay. Uh, this company is providing micro franchises not to their employees but their relatives, I mean the wife, the, the husband, the son or the daughter. And like that, always leveraging result, uh, resources. Um, or, or, or we are also running a competition, very interesting one. It is called My Bathroom, My Kitchen, My Pride. And we challenge our clients to start to, to send us the photo of the worst bathroom in their community and to commit to change the bathroom. Last year, 600 bathroom and kitchen were built. And uh, the purpose was just to win the competition. People did it not to be more hygienic or to be more clean, but to win the competition. But this is a uh, human spirit. And uh, it cost 600 bathroom and kitchen cost $1,000. That was the price. And where was the money? We don't know. They raise the money some, somehow. And this is the human potential. Uh, this is the energy trap in people. And finding uh, ways to unleash, uh, we believe we can, we can solve uh, many, many problems. Um, so finally, uh, once you apply the survey, you have, uh, the family has the, develop, the, the map of life and the organization put in place the menu of solutions, you need a mentoring program to link both. So the mentors will help the families to self-evaluate, will help them to build their map of life, will follow up the map of life, and will link the demand, life of map, with the solutions, with existing solutions. Uh, who is the mentor? In our program, with our, in the program with our clients, the credit officer is the mentor. In, for example, in programs that work with public health, the mentor is the, the social assistant. And in the work we do with companies, the mentors come from the human resources department or, or its equivalent. Uh, we use some tools the integral theory and the influencer theory, those theories help us to uh, influence uh, people's behavior so as, uh, in order to change those behaviors. Um, as I already mentioned, we are working in, in many countries. Here in Taiwan, we started to work with Domi. Uh, they adopted uh, the technology. They started, they adapted the, the indicators to, to Taiwan, and they started to use the tool. Let me uh, show you another short video about what they are doing. Thank you. 
大部分眼睛都不太清楚啊。换了之前就比这个亮度差不多差了一半，啊，这个偶尔一打大家好开心啊。So Dom is not only working with kids, not only working with environment, but they are helping their, their, their beneficiaries to uh, leave their poverty. Uh, they started to apply the survey. Um, those are the first results they are getting, and now they have a challenge. You know? So uh, as you see, in income and employment, we have an issue here, many reds and yellow. Uh, not that bad in health and environment, nor in housing and infrastructure. Education is challenging, education and culture, organization and participation also, and like that. So next step for Domi would be to find the right partners to provide solutions and to start establishing their goals. So we are not going to be able to solve those issues in a year. 
but step by step we can we can start solving the different problems. Maybe in three years or five years, who knows? But uh, the thing is about to establish goal and to make us accountable. The thing is about to measure our impact and to measure it not only by the number of people we financially include, as Fundación Paraguaya, for example, but to measure our impact by, by the number of people that overcome poverty. We have to fill the existing gaps. And we can do it. We can do it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Luis, for the inspirational sharing. Please be seated uh, as we continue to invite our panel speakers to the following session.